could, it's hoped, it's claimed, bring an end to the kind of misery that ruined so many people's holidays and business trips during the Icelandic volcanic ash cloud disruption last year. A void is an airborne device. It measures infrared radiation, has two fast sampling thermal infrared cameras which make images of anything that's in front of the aircraft. Now the two cameras have been tuned to see the signature of silicates, which are the component that make up volcanic ash. That information can be relayed straight back to the pilot in the cockpit. Because he can see it so far ahead, he has maybe five or ten minutes warning. This will allow him to make just a small adjustment to the, uh, the flight path navigating quite safely around the cloud. So this little orange tube then is what all the fuss is about. This is the avoid device. Now so far it's done about 30 hours of test flights around here, Mount Etna, but the next stage is to attach it to a rather bigger aircraft, an Airbus. When that's done we should have a fairly good idea of whether avoid will work or not. This was the first time we've actually mounted it on an aircraft to be able to fly near a volcano such as Etna over the back of me here which is basically emitting SO2. So we can detect SO2 as well as ash. It's a little bit cloudy, but I think it's uh, possible to fly up to the Etna. Yes, I think so. And so we can start our measurements. What we're now going to do is move to a scenario where we take the aircraft to a real erupting big volcano and spend some time actually flying in the ash cloud. Now, people thought it was pretty bad last time around in 2010. There are dark mutterings now about Katla. Mm -hmm which last erupted in 1918, Correct. normally erupts every 40 to 80 years. We're overdue. If it did happen, how bad would it be and what would the effects on passengers be? Well, Katla will certainly be, or is forecast to be, a much bigger eruption than the previous two. But we will be in a much better position today than we were two, uh, nearly two years ago. When a void comes along and we can carry this on board aircraft, we can reduce any disruption in the future to any future volcanic ash event to an absolute minimum and keep our passengers flying, which is our sole goal. You're a budget airline. People pay for their sandwiches and their peanuts and their drinks. Are they going to pay to get an avoid device strapped onto their plane? Definitely not. £50 million loss is a powerful incentive to go and do something about it, and that's what we are doing. So this is investing money to prevent the losses that we incurred in the past. The passengers will see no effect on the ticket price. Is this job done? Is problem solved? No. Will, will millions of passengers who were stranded and had their holidays and their business trips disrupted last year, will it be fine this year or as soon as this gets in service? Well, as soon as it gets in service, certainly I think aircraft will not be grounded. They'll have all of the strategic information from the model forecast, from the satellite data, but they've also got this extra safety device which can be used in a tactical sense so that they can turn it on and if there's a cloud there which wasn't supposed to be there, they'll see it and fly safely around. Who came up with the name Avoid? Oh, I did. Yeah. How long did that take? It didn't take that long, actually. I've, I'm quite good at making up acronyms, so I was quite pleased with that one. Uh -huh.